Okay, success. Uh, let's see. So, uh, welcome to a beginner's guide to reading Node.js core source. If you came here expecting to see uh, Agachi's talk, uh, sorry, you got me instead. Uh, let's see, I see some people who already know how to read Node core source, so I can definitely recommend if you uh, get bored to go to Wakedi's talk about uh, uh, the dark web. That should be really interesting. And there's also a workshop going on right now about building apps in Electron, so there's that too. Uh, I'm Rich Trott, and uh, it's customary to talk about yourself a little bit at the start of a talk. So I work at the University of California in San Francisco. I work in the library, but I'm not a librarian. But um, I am also a member of the Node.js core technical committee, for what that's worth. And no lesser an authority than Miles Borns has called me the hardest working meat bag in Node.js. I also started something called Node To Do, which we will get to in a little bit, but throwing that out there. And I got started with Node. Um, I'll try not to repeat too much of William Kapke's awesome uh, 20 minutes that he gave on the stage a little while ago. But I, I got started with Node when it was IOJS. Uh, right around the time of the of the fork, and the fork was a time of um, uh, some distress among in some quarters about what this meant for the future of node and the future of the platform and uh, but there were also a bunch of people who were really excited uh, for the reasons William described, uh, namely that a main uh, component of the a main message of the of the IOGS project was come and help us, we want your help, we need your help. Um, there's not enough of us. And uh, that was really exciting to me. And uh, so, why am I talking about this? Well, we're here to talk about reading uh, Node.js core, and why would you want to do that? There's, you know, there's, there's a bunch of potential reasons. You might want to debug a particular problem you're having with Node. Um, you might, uh, just have intellectual curiosity. How does it all work? How does it all fit together? Um, but for me, the, uh, the, the reason I come across the, mo the most frequently is, like my cat, you want to start contributing to Node, uh, Node.js. And uh, so I'm kind of doing a little bit of a bait and switch in that I'm hoping that uh, this talk can encourage people to, to participate in the project. Uh, contribute code or documentation or any of a number of things. Uh, because if you're successful at that, uh, that increases the pool of people who are participating in the project. And the more, you know, in, in theory at least, the more uh, good folks we have doing good stuff, the more, the more, you know, the better the project will be and the more tautologically, the more good stuff we can do. So a couple of caveats about this talk. Um, First of all, um, assuming that you're coming at this from a JavaScript perspective, if C++ is your jam and you want to approach this from V8 or LibUV, uh, this talk may not be the way to do it. Uh, the other thing is what I'm describing worked for me. Uh, might not work for everybody. I don't know. Um, just pointing that out. Uh, step zero. Write a Hello World program in Node.js or something. Just get familiar with Node, use it a little bit. Since you're at Node Interactive, I'm assuming you've already done that, so we're just going to barrel through to step one. Um, <clears throat> pick some documentation and read it. Uh, in particular, go to the API documentation, and don't try to read it you know, front to back, but pick an API. You know, any API will do, uh, but preferably one you're interested in or one you're using. There's, uh, you know, if you're, if you're interested in scaling, maybe check out the cluster API. If you're interested, if you've been writing web apps, maybe look at the HTTP or HTTPS uh, API. If you're into cryptography or something, you know, look at TLS, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's some obvious reasons why this is a good approach, and then maybe one or two less obvious reasons. Um, for one thing, uh, if you understand how the API is used, and, you know, even if you've used an API a lot, you probably don't, you know, there's an excellent chance you don't know all the little 
bits and pieces of it. If you understand how an API is used, then uh, that provides clues to its implementation. Uh, but the, there's, a, there's a potentially less obvious uh, benefit to starting, starting with documentation and starting with a really, really modular little piece of the documentation. That forces you to focus because Node Core is sprawling. And if you decide, I'm interested in X, um, you know, X can be in 18 different files, and you know, it's, it's good to just have one, one thing to look at just to sort of wrap your head around how something might work. Additionally, if you're looking at the documentation, you might find something that's broken in the documentation because there, you know, a lot of this stuff was not written by people who are professional technical writers or anything like that. So there's going to be omissions, there's going to be errors, there's going to be all sorts of problems, and this is an opportunity for you to fix it. Um, this is, uh, this is, you know, about getting an easy contribution in and improving the docs for others. But there's also another element to going through the commit process, uh, the, the code review or documentation review in this case process. And it's that there's a lot of stuff that happens during that process, like this metadata gets added to commits. And without getting into too much detail here, I feel that it's really helpful to understand, I feel that, it, that understanding that process is really helpful in understanding the code um, and how it's put together and why certain decisions were made. And if that sounds mysterious and interesting, we can talk about that more later. Um, but I only have 20 minutes here. So there's a caveat with the whole, hey, you're reading documentation, you found something missing, fix it. And it's that documentation is not easy. It's a, it's a real pet peeve of mine, actually, that a lot of projects will take documentation. In fact, I just did this this morning. But a lot of projects will take open, have open issues around documentation, and they'll mark them good first contribution. Um, documenta writing documentation is not hard. Writing good documentation is incredibly hard. And uh, documentation skills are a superpower. If you have the superpower, please use it for good and uh, help out. But uh, so step two, after you've read some documentation, is to look at some code. Um, fortunately, our code is not minified like this. This is just a metaphor or something, I guess. <laughs> um, but if you were looking, if you're reading about the cluster module, go into lib and look at libcluster.js. If you're looking at HTTP, look at libhttp.js, etc. Um, some of these module files are pretty short and digestible. Some of them are kind of long, and you're going to want to just look at the, the parts that are of interest to you. But look at the core source code. And one secret about Node Core is that these files are pretty understandable, um, pretty approachable. Uh, the thing that usually trips people up when they first approach them, at least from you know, anecdotal experience anyway, is, uh, is, is actually misunderstanding the API or not understanding how modules load. Um, but while reading these, these files, you're going to find stuff that you may not know exists, like process.binding, which I don't think is actually documented. Um, so when you find stuff like that, this is, you know, this sort of, these are the sorts of pieces that, that will help you understand how the code actually works and how it all fits together. You, you can look in the documentation for things, or for things that aren't in the documentation, you can go to the node-dev channel on, uh, on Freenode IRC and ask there, so on and so forth. Um, so step three after all that, because, you know, oh, well, now you've read the code, you understand it. But um, I recommend finding the tests for that module and reading through the tests, because sometimes there's behavior that's only documented in tests. And that's kind of where things get really interesting. Um, so if you were looking at uh, HTTP, you might look in test parallel, test HTTP dash whatever dot JS. And um, for HTTP, there's going to be way too many test files to just sit and read through. You'll, you'll want to you know, poke your eye out or something. But, uh, uh, but you can uh, just look at test-http.js and sort of just get a feel for the test. Also, how the tests are written is super important. If you're going to contribute, especially, uh, chances are you're going to need to write a test. So there's the readme file in the test directory has some information about how tests work and are put together. But the real gold mine is probably the, the uh, writing underbar test.md file that's in doc slash guides. Uh, it's really short, really understandable, really well written. Um, and uh, it's, a good, it's a good resource. So 
bait and switch, we're moving right into contributions. So uh, if you have your laptop open, I think you should probably, right about now, it might be a good time to go to node to do, N O D E T O D O dot O R G, and you'll see something that looks like this. And you'll see a getting started guide link. And if you click on that, it goes to a gist that looks like this. And the first few things in it are going to be pretty straightforward. There's, you know, if you don't already have a GitHub account, you should create a GitHub account. If you haven't forked the Node.js repo, fork the repo. Uh, but it takes you through the steps to clone and then build and run tests. And then at the end, after you've run your tests, it says, yeah, why don't you maybe send an email to us or tweet at us, and we'll give you a really easy or at least maybe not easy, but certainly uh, manageable and good first contribution to provide to Node to improve, to improve the, uh, the code base and sort of you know, hopefully get you hooked and then you start finding your own issues and stuff. Uh, if this sounds an awful lot like Code and Learn, which is happening on Thursday morning, which I recommend you come to, to as well, uh, that's because it's basically the same thing. Uh, that wasn't on purpose. Um, Code and Learn was originally conceived as a way to get people interested in the darker corners of the code base that nobody understands or only one or two people understand. And we'd have those one or two experts there and they would sort of train people and help them out. And I don't, I, I, you know, I haven't been to, you know, you know, there was Code and Learn event in London and one in Amsterdam and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, I've, I haven't been to, you know, most of them, uh, any of them, uh, but, uh, uh, my impression is that it never really quite worked out that way and that it kind of sort of evolved uh, into a good first contribution kind of experience like I just described. So sort of two things that just sort of happened independently. The main difference is Code and Learn is, you know, is, is affiliated with the foundation, Node.js Foundation, and Node to Do is just something that me and two other people do. Um, hopefully, hopefully more, by the way, for those of you people who are like, you know, already have contributions in and want to help other people get started. Uh, I, do, I, I could use some help uh, answering emails and tweets. Um, so yeah, so that's me, that's node to do, that's the URL. And I thought I was going to have way less time at the end and avoid the dreaded Q&A. Um, I still might do that by saying I'm not doing Q&A, and I'll just be kind of like hanging out over here. So. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks a lot.